All right, so to get started here, you can see I'm currently on the Keros landing page and to download the software, you can see that currently it only allow us to join the waiting list. So instead of joining the wait list, I actually already have the Kero AI IDE's package download on my local machine and also upload this on a Google Drive folder. So if you're interested to try this out, you can also download this from a Google Drive folder. You can check out my Discord channel for Eric Tech Server, which I'll link in the description below. And if you come to the CoShare channel, and here you can see basically attached a Google Drive link where you can be able to see all the Kero AI IDE downloads that you can try it out based on your operating system. But once you download this and set this up on your local machine, this is what it looks like. We first have to start with configurations because I already have a configuration set up for VS Code. So we're just gonna import from VS Code here. Boom. Look at that, it's going to import all my VS Code settings and extensions to this AI IDEs. So let's wait for a bit until it fully installed. All right, so now you can see that it's fully set up and configured. So now we're gonna choose a theme. So a lot of people ask me which theme that I'm using. So I'm always using the Solarize Lite in VS Code or Cursor or any other AI IDEs. So since you guys loved it, then I'll continue to use the Solarize Lite for my IDE themes. So in that case, I'm just gonna continue with this. So here, I'm just gonna set up my shell commands using this AI IDEs. And here you can see this is what it looks like after we fully set this up. So here you can see we have our folders, our search, our source control, debugging sessions, extensions. And then here we also have Kiro extensions where we can open a project to start working or coding with Kiro. All right, so let's get into the real stuff. So here you can see I open a new folder and here on the right, you can see that I have a new session and you can start a new session by clicking on this chat icon here and this will pop up the new session on the right. So here you can see we have the live option, which basically we start chat with the coding agent, start to design and start to build things. When the requirements wasn't really clear, we can use this. But let's say if we have a clear requirement where the plan is really straightforward, then we can use a spec option where we're gonna plan first, then start building. And once it started plan, it's creating a requirement documentations and it's gonna execute each of those tasks one by one inside of our coding AI IDs. So with that being said, let's put this into a test. So here you can see I basically found a UI mockup for live streaming application, which here you can see there's different types of variations for this application design. So I basically download these images and here I basically create a folder called UI mockups. And inside of this, I basically save those screenshots into this folder. So now I basically just provide a prompt, select the spec mode using the clause on it 4.0. And then here we're just gonna turn on for the autopilot. So here you can see I basically paste those images onto the chat and now I'll give it a prompt and here's what the prompt says. So we're gonna design a modern social media application specifically for live streaming and here it has the feature list out for the live screens. So I'm gonna send this request to Caro and first thing first, you can see that it's going to create the requirements.md file. So inside of our Caro.caro folder, you can see that we have our requirements doc and it's going to create the requirements for this application. All right, so here you can see this is our requirements.md file and basically here's the introductions. So basically what we're trying to build is a social media mobile application. It's focused on live video streaming for user interactions and it has features like real time viewer interactions through comments, follows, social sharing feature, and etc. And these are the list of requirements. And you notice that for each requirements here, it has a acceptance criteria. For each of those requirements, these are the condition that needs to be met for each of those requirements. So here you can see for requirement one, where we have user to have a immersive viewing experience. So the acceptance criteria here is that user can be able to open a live stream and be able to display the video in full screen vertical, can be able to play the video, maintain the same aspect ratio and the video quality. And then when the stream is live, then they should be able to see the video real time. And then when the stream ends, the user will be notified and option to discover other contents. This is basically the immersive experience that we're looking for. It basically gives you a definition for each of those requirements. All right, so once we satisfy with the requirements.md file, then we can start to move on to the design phase. So in that case, we can click on move to design phase button here, and it will start to move on to that phase. All right, so now you can see that it has finished the design phase. So inside of our folder, you can see that it has created the design.md file. And here you can see this is what it looks like. So we have our overview, the architecture. And what's really cool about this is that it also creates a architecture layout for this entire application. Now we're not able to view this here. So what we can do is we can be able to right click, open the preview, and this is what it looks like. So here you can see this is our design doc and we can be able to see the full layout for the entire architecture. So this is the high level architecture that we have for our application. We have our client layer, we have our API layer, external services, database, core services, Right, so here you can see we have our mobile app which communicates to the API service layer. API service layer will basically communicate with our core services like user service, social service, 
stream servers, chat servers, and so on. And each of those servers will engage with the database layer, right, to persist the data. And then we also have external services that we can communicate to, for example, push notifications. And they also list out all the tech stacks on what they are going to use to build this application. So things like React Native for the cross mobile applications, where it can be able to build the iOS and the Android app through this framework. And then we also have our video streaming using the WebRTC to achieve the streaming. And then we also have real-time communication using WebSockets. And then for backend here, we're using Node.js with Express.js framework to do so. And in terms of database, Postgres or PostSQL for database storage, Redis for caching, media storage is gonna be using S3 or any other cloud storage for video assets. Then the CDN is gonna be using CloudFront. So pretty much we have our tech stack here that we can be able to use and review. And obviously we can also change technology stack we can be able to use. For example, if we don't wanna use mobile app, we can change it to like a web version of this. Uh, we can also change that here as well. So pretty much we can be able to add or change whatever that we have instead of .md files. Then we also have our components interfaces. So things like all those components that we see here, we have our components and interface. So th things like the live stream screen components, and here you can see it gave us a interface designed for this, also the key elements. And then lastly, also give us a air handling, where it's gonna talk about how we can be able to handle different errors in our system. So things like network connectivities, video streaming errors, how we're gonna handle this, user input validations, air UI patterns. So it's pretty much gonna lay out those things on how we're gonna handle these errors. Then lastly, we also have our testing strategy. So things like unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, which is basically the standard testings. Then we also have user experience testing and manual testing. So which is gonna be included for the entire project implementation. So pretty much once we satisfy with this design documentation, we can then start to move on to the implementation where it's gonna create a list of tasks that it's gonna perform. Okay, so here you can see, I'm just gonna move to the implementation plan. And here, let's click this to see what it generates. All right, so here is basically the entire implementation plan it generates for the live stream social application. So for a task list, so here you can see we have each individual task. So first thing first, we're gonna set up the project structure and core dependencies. So here you can see it's gonna initialize a React native project using TypeScript. Here you can see it's gonna install the related dependencies, also setting up the environments for debugging, creating the folder for structure. Then we also have implements the core data models for TypeScript. Now what's really cool about this is that it actually automatically break the task into subtasks. So for example, these tasks are really small, so it's gonna perform in one go. But then if we were to scroll down to task five for building video streaming infrastructure, so here you can see it's gonna create the full screen vertical and it's gonna create the stream overlay system. So it's gonna break this big task into a subtask. So here in that case, I'm just gonna start with the first task and here we're just gonna click on start task here and it's gonna start working on it. All right, so now you can see task one is fully completed. What's really cool about this is that it's also able to verify the complete project structure to make sure the task is fully completed once it's done. Now, during this process, there are times where the AI might run into errors. It knows how to run those checks to fix those errors, so which is really cool. All right, so the other thing we're gonna take a look at is the agent hooks. So you can access the agent hooks here from the Carol extensions, and here you can click on the agent hooks. So here you can click on the plus sign to create a new hook. Now, basically the agent hook is to listen for any file changes in our code base and try to trigger whatever actions we create. So for example, whenever a event occurs, it's going to use this prompt that we defined here, send it to the agents, and Carol is gonna make the updates in our code base. So for example, whenever we make a change, it's gonna update the documentation. So for example, whenever we have a files change like these, it's gonna ask agents to make change to the docs. That could be like the readme file or any folders that we have specified here, okay? Or it could something be like optimizing a code. Whenever there's a change in our repository, we can try to detect, analyze the code and be able to make it much more better. So let's say if I were to just say update documentation, and then here we're just going to enter this and this is going to create a hook. Okay, so now you can see the hook is fully created. So pretty much whenever there's a change for TypeScript files, or configuration changes, it's going to trigger this hook automatically to update our project documentation. And of course, we can always update our events. So it could be things like when we try to delete a file or maybe a file is created or a manual trigger, then it's going to automatically trigger this hook. And the goal for agent hooks here is it's basically to automate those repetitive tasks. Every time we did something, we don't have to manually talk to Carol to make that change. Carol is gonna listen for that event, automatically make that change for us. So pretty much that's what we're trying to do. So let me show you an example for this. So now come back to the code base. If I were to make a change in the app.tx. So in that case, for example, if I were to change the title for the application, Eric app, if 
I were to save this, you can see that it's going to trigger this action. It basically going to synchronize the changes that we made and it's going to update the documentation here, which you, which we can see here. So it's currently creating this file because we don't have it. But here you can see it creates that. So whenever we update our code, it's going to update our readme file here, which in my opinion, it's going to save us a lot of time because every time when we try to make change, we might also want to update our documentation. Since we already have hooks, it's going to automatically trigger that for us. And then lastly, we also have the agent steering, which will basically set rules about this project. So if we were to generate a steering docs, it's going to read through the entire uh, repository structure, creating the rules for this project. So things like what product is this and what is the technology stack we're using? What's the uh, project structure look like? So it's going to create those rules. And whenever we try to engage with Kiro, with the coding agents, it's going to have that context and it's going to look through those rules and be able to understand how it's going to better create or modify our code base. Awesome. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.